So in case you haven't seen, I released like two days ago the video of Alan Wake 2 system requirements that are just crazy with cards like the RX 6700 XT according to the developers being only able to run the game at 1080p DLSS performance mode. So basically 540p medium settings for 60 FPS which is insane. What the fuck is this piece of shit? And of course, with this all said, Nvidia released some hours ago an article uh, about Alan Wake 2 and how they use the LSS 3.5, ray reconstruction, full ray tracing, path tracing and so on, and they also included some performance numbers. But let's start, for example, with... Um, they have some comparisons with RTX On and RTX Off. Uh, with RTX On, we immediately see here the, the differences in the, in the reflections, so much more realistic if you ask me of course because since this is um this is kind of iron it is normal that it is reflecting at this point also as soon as we look at the reflections on the mirror it looks much better i sincerely in terms of normal gaming i prefer the um, the glass without reflections it just looks well better maybe just a little less a, li a little more shiny in in here but i do prefer the glass without a lot of reflections but it definitely does look more realistic and even on this scenario uh you can see that for example here uh the ambient occlusion there is much better on these parts there on the on the hat of the um, of the gentleman of the gentleman behind so as you can see we have better ambient occlusion there, better lighting as well. And just because of that, I'm gonna leave you with today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Maximum, Maximum Settings. Settings. A cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. As for the outside, the difference is minimal, as you can see. So we can definitely play with, uh, with ray tracing off, at least in the outside scenarios and in the inside scenarios as well, but the outside scenarios look very, very well with rasterization as well. Even without any kind of ray tracing, they look very, very well, at least from what we can see right now. In terms of ray tracing, we can see that we have more lighting from the global illumination, possibly, uh, as, the, um, as the foliage seems a bit warmer due to the sun's color, although the sun lighting is not warm per se, but you know what I mean. It looks much better in this scenario, but that's about it. The ambient occlusion downside here. But besides that, we don't really have much difference and I believe that rasterization will perform much better than ray tracing and it also looks great with great textures, textures as well, at least in most scenarios, not here, of course, but at least in most parts. As for another one, okay, now we only have ray tracing, yes. RTX on, RTX off, this one as well, RTX on. If this is real game footage, well it is, we can see here that it is, but the ambient occlusion is just insane, it, it just, it is working very very well in terms of lighting, light bouncing everywhere as you can, as you can see for example, bouncing from there, the green lights to there, there and then there, to the, to the train wrecked, or to the wrecked train, <laughs> yes, as for the reflections, nothing really astronomical i believe that we should at least see uh see the graffitis here since we're seeing the the lights we should see the graffitis but maybe this is well this is not path tracing maybe it's just ray tracing but if we're seeing the lights we should be able to see the graffitis as well so that's the thing lacking here as for the ray tracing presets it seems that we have path tracing once again we have the racing the ray tracing preset low uses no path tracing whatsoever ray tracing preset to medium uses pa uses partial ray tracing with only one bounce something that you can do for example in cyberpunk as well because cyber cyberpunk 2077 uses two bounces i believe two bounces of lighting but you can go to the files and actually change that to one bounce uh, the difference in image fidelity will be little but the performance will be much better especially on amd gpus and sorry for for my english i wasn't even gonna record this video but as soon as i saw as i saw this i i just went i have to record the video asap so my brain is still functioning in portuguese and i'm trying to speak english and
Once again, ray tracing presets, partial, one bounce with ray tracing ambient occlusion on the last hit. As for the high preset, we have full with three bounces with ray tracing ambient occlusion as well. The more the bounces, the more realistic it should in theory look. It is not always the case, but at least in theory, it should look better. As for the path tracing indirect lighting quality, once again, in the low settings, uh, we have none. In the medium settings, it is medium, and on the high settings, it is high. Who would have thought? The only thing that you actually have uh, on the low ray tracing presets is the ray tracing direct, direct lighting. So you don't have the indirect lighting, which is one of the, one of the most important things in, in terms of realistic scenarios, and you don't have the ray traced transparency. Uh, so low preset, only the ray trace direct, direct lighting. As for the medium, you have everything on medium and you have path tracing as well. Interesting. Also, we have new things, the direct lighting denoising quality. You can actually change the quality here, which is nice. So low settings, low settings. Um, you have the direct and indirect lighting. As for the low settings, you only have the denoising for the, um, for the direct lighting because you only have ray trace direct lighting, which makes sense. As for the medium preset, once again, the noise in quality on high, but the uh, the indirect lighting also to medium. The denoising is what, what actually takes off the noise on the ray tracing reflections, the noise, the, sh the shimmering, call it whatever he wants, but it makes the image look better, of course, at the expense of performance. Um, I don't really know if you can actually change the denoising options uh, separately from the ray tracing presets, but if you can actually do it, it would be nice because you can actually, for example, select just medium settings, but with high denoising in order to bring medium settings, but with better filtering. So lower shimmering, lower artifacts, less artifacts in this case. Now Nvidia claims that the LSS 3.5 enhances Alan Wake's to full ray tracing, of course, because they have to sell their fish as usual. Then we have some comparisons with ray reconstruction, once again, because it is there, with faster light response, something that was shown on the NVIDIA's event, where they actually shown the Alan Wake 2 performing in terms of the LSS 3.5, with ray reconstruction, the LSS 3.5 having way less shimmering as well. In terms of reflections, it is supposed to look better, at least in some scenarios, because Cyberpunk does not look better in all scenarios with ray reconstruction, at least from what I've tested with a 4070 Ti, and I've tested quite a lot. This was another part shown, like I told you before, more stability, so less shimmering. It looks different, because although it is just a ray reconstruction, we also have uh, different lighting here, so we kind of have more light hitting here, kind of changes the aspect, and I don't really know if I like it more with ray reconstruction or without it. It's kind of strange. I don't, I can't really say. I kind of prefer this one because I don't really, I can't really tell by the image, but in terms of, of movement, I know that the shimmering is way less with ray reconstruction. I do hope that the ray reconstruction is better than on Cyberpunk 2077. I do hope. Now let's go to the performance bollocks that Nvidia loves to, to show you, with up to 4.5 times faster on GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs. As for the 1080p results, maximum ray tracing settings, Maximum settings, high ray tracing settings, which are basically the maximum ones, with the LSS 3.5, in this case, quality mode, which is quality settings, so 67% of the base resolution is like 720p, doesn't really matter. In this scenario, the, the, the RTX 4090 can actually deliver pretty decent uh, native performance, but we're talking about 1080p, but still 1080p ray tracing, path tracing, and we still get accordingly to Nvidia, according to Nvidia, up to 90 frames per second, which let me tell you, isn't bad at all. Okay, it's a 4090, it's 1080p, but don't forget, it is path tracing with three bounces, which is a lot, uh, including, let me just raise the microphone a bit, including, um, the, the other ray tracing reflections, indirect lighting, direct lighting, everything. everything. Even the, the RTX 4080 can deliver 68, much less than the 4090, because the 4090 is much more powerful, but still, 
68 average FPS without any kind of upscaling and path tracing enabled and even the 4070 Ti can reach uh, really close to the 60 average FPS mark at maximum settings with path tracing enabled so it's not that bad the 4070 44 and even the the 4060 can deliver 30 fps with um the lss quality mode the the upscaler only it would go to maybe around 40 fps uh 50 fps at max and then it would go to the 82. will those fps be well reproduced because in cyberpunk 2077 the frame generation works pretty well but in alan wake we don't really know if that's the case and if we're gonna have more artifacts like for example in the spider-man games where we have several artifacts that aren't really pretty but in some other games like hogwarts legacy uh, and cyberpunk 2077 the frame generation works very very well in terms of 1440p well 1440p gets harder the 1490 gets natively at 1440p maximum settings with path tracing 62 average fps and if this is true the game is not as heavy as we thought not as heavy but i mean it's a 1490 the card is super expensive but once again path tracing which is really heavy so i kind of understand it i would like to see rasterization results as well without the the ray tracing but once again if we use the upscaling to quality mode and then frame generation we get up to 170 uh average fps which is insane if true once again so for the 4080 they claim that we have 44 average fps with native resolution which is not that bad considering we're running at 1440p and we can get up to 133 as soon as we go to quality mode the lss quality mode and then um the frame generation enabled even the 4070 Ti, once again I will test this card, can go up to 35 average FPS in terms of in terms of native resolution, but as soon as you enable the LSS and frame generation, you can get up to 100, 108. And if this is true, it means that with frame generation, I would be able to play at 1440p ultra wide at around 80 FPS, which is more or less the, the results that I get with Cyberpunk 2077 in some parts. In others, the results are even worse. So if this is true, it means that path tracing on Alan Wake is actually less heavy than the, um, the path tracing on Cyberpunk 2077. And if that's true, and I saw some images and it looks great in interiors, for example, with Athi from Control, if this is true, this is gonna be insane. You're teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> 4K results, this is where things get really bad for the GPUs, but it's 4K. So 4K native, the RTX 4090 at maximum settings gets 30 average FPS, 32.8 according to Nvidia once again, with path tracing enabled is not so bad, in this case 22 average FPS for the 4080 and 17 FPS for the 4070 Ti, which once again is not that bad because we're talking about 4K native. The 4070 Ti, for example, has a, a bit buzz of 192, so it isn't even made for 4K, and being able to actually deliver in real time with path tracing three bounces, max settings, 4K native, 17 FPS, is already a pretty good deal. And once again, if we use the, the LSS performance mode, now performance mode, so we're basically upscaling from 1080p to 4K, we can actually go with that ray reconstruction and frame generation, we, we can go up to 82 average FPS. I doubt this will be the case because NVIDIA numbers and AMD numbers are not to be trusted usually uh, in terms of presentations, but I do believe that since the game is, is coming out in like two days, I do believe that these results are more or less on par with the reality. So if this is true, and if frame generation works well in this game, I believe that even the 4070 Ti players can play um, at 4K if they don't mind reducing the, the overall quality a bit. But 1080p upscaled to 1440p or 1080p upscaled to 4K still looks better than native 1080p. And if we can actually run better than native 1080p in the scenario at 82.2 average FPS without movement artifacts or without a lot of movement artifacts well it would be much better than than having to running to, to run it natively which once again 17 fps
And in my opinion, this all means that the PC requirements were actually, well, were actually not that real um, in this specific scenario. Usually they are in some games, but not all. But according to NVIDIA, it seems that they aren't, because if we can actually run at 1440p, and I repeat once again, 1440p, full ray tracing, path tracing, everything enabled natively, and we can get with a 4080, with a 4080, 44.6 FPS. I do believe that without any kind of ray tracing, we would get a, around, let's say, 70, 80 FPS if the rasterization is well done. So. A 4080 getting uh, 70, 80 FPS at 1440p on a next generation game seems pretty fine. And once again, without using the LSS and without using frame generation. You could then use frame generation and get almost double those frames. And if the frames are actually as good as Cyberpunk 2077 ones, they will look very well, especially if you have 70 average FPS base. Still, these are all kind of speculations because most times NVIDIA's numbers are not to be trusted. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. Most times NVIDIA's numbers are not to be trusted, the same for AMD's. So we actually need to wait three more days in order to test this game properly. I will obviously test it with a 7900 XTX and the 4070 Ti the 4070 Ti to test frame generation, the LSS 3.5, ray reconstruction, path tracing and so on, and the 7900 XTX to see how the, the game actually runs in terms of rasterization only on the AMD cards. But so far, it actually seems that the game performs better than we thought, which is a good sign for gamers, even though that the older generation cards cannot play the game, it seems that at least the recent generations can play it decently, doesn't seem that bad, at least according to NVIDIA. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these results and the PC requirements that we saw, that we saw above and you saw on my previous video. Really, let me know because according to the PC requirements, the game should be much, much heavier, but, but seeing the, the actual numbers that NVIDIA is presenting, it actually seems that the game isn't as heavy as we thought which once again is a nice thing for the gaming community. Once again, thank you very much and see you in the next video.